Uh, dear students, I hope uh, everyone is doing great. In today's lecture, I will cover parts of uh, chapter number six, which is financial statements uh, analysis. Uh, in this chapter, you will learn about uh, various analytical tools which are necessary for you as a finance manager to make uh, informed uh, decisions. Before uh, proceeding to chapter number six, I would like to give you a quick recap uh, of whatever we covered before uh, the midterm. So we started with chapter number one. In chapter number one, we learned that finance managers make three uh, key decisions. One is investment decision, number two is financing decisions, and number three is asset management decisions. In chapter number three, we learned that all business organizations that actually work in a certain uh, environment, are mainly business environment, tax environment, and financial environment. Uh, in business environment, we also talked about some uh, forms of business organizations. Uh, the most simplest ones are sole proprietorship and uh, partnerships. And then uh, corporations and limited liability companies are a little bit complex forms of uh, businesses. Uh, we talked about uh, personal taxation as well as corporate uh, taxations. Uh, and then uh, in financial environment, we talked about primary markets, secondary markets, and we also talked about um, money market and capital markets. In chapter number three, uh, we talked about time value of money. And if you ask me, this is actually the most important uh, chapter of uh, this book. And uh, the reason it is important because we use these tools um, later for valuation of different securities and for capital budgeting uh, techniques. So if you are comfortable with the concepts covered in chapter number three, that's great. If you are not, please go back and read chapter number three again because this one is extremely, extremely important. In chapter number three, we talked about present and future values. Uh, this one is actually the generalized formula for uh, calculating future values from uh, present values. And if there are multiple compoundings in a year, then we make uh, two adjustment. The first adjustment is actually in this term. Uh, and the second adjustment is actually in the number of years. Uh, we also talked about annuities and uh, perpetuities. Annuities are actually a series of uh, equal cash flows. So one of the condition is it has to be equal. Uh, number second, uh, these cash, cash flows are actually occurring uh, at an equal interval of time. So let's say if you are getting $100 from your investment, let's say each year, that's a typical uh, annuity. And there are two forms of annuity. One is uh, ordinary annuity, and then the other one is on the uh, annuity due. Perpetuities are actually annuities, uh, but it does not have a definite uh, life. So they go forever. Um, as a last topic, we covered uh, amortization. Amortization is actually calculating uh, installments of a loan. Uh, so we also covered that. In chapter number four, we used uh, those concepts that we learned in chapter number three uh, for valuation of long-term securities, um, mainly bonds. And within the bonds, we learned about how to value zero coupon bonds and non-zero coupon bonds. Then we moved to preferred stocks. Um, preferred stock is actually like a hybrid security. It has some features of uh, bonds for fixed income securities and it has some features of uh, um, common stock. As I told you in my lecture that uh, valuation of bonds and preferred stocks uh, are not that difficult because we know about the cash flows uh, in advance. So evaluation of those uh, securities are not uh, that difficult. Common stock on the other hand uh, valuation of common stock is a little bit tricky 
uh, you have to work with some assumptions. In literature, normally they work with three different assumptions. One is constant growth, the other one is non -growth, no growth, and the third one is uh, growth in stages. In chapter number five, we talked about uh, risk and return. Uh, there's a popular notion in finance literature, higher the risk, higher the return. So of course, if the risk is high, you need a uh, high return to compensate for that uh, risk. Uh, the problem though is how do we uh, measure risk? Risk, we normally measure it through standard uh, deviation. And whenever we talk about uh, return, it's actually expected or uh, average return. So we started with a single stock uh, portfolio, with a single stock evaluation, and then we moved to a portfolio. In portfolio, we do exactly the same thing. We calculate uh, the return, but at the same time, we adjust uh, for the weights. For calculating risk, first of all, we calculate uh, the variance covariance matrix, and then we use uh, weights of uh, individual stocks. We also talked about uh, risk attitudes. So some individuals are more uh, risk seeking than others. Uh, we actually compare the expected return with certainty equivalent. So if the certainty equivalent is less than the expected value, that attitude is called risk aversion. Uh, the other a risk attitude is called risk indifference in which uh, an individual actually the certainty equivalent for that individual is equal to the expected uh, value of any investment and then the third one is uh, risk preference or risk seeking um, in those situations where the certainty equivalent is e greater than actually the expected uh, value uh, in literature it has been established that most individuals are actually risk averse. Um, risk attitudes is extremely important topic, especially in uh, behavioral uh, finance. So please, if you're struggling with uh, those concepts, read uh, those chapters again. For risk uh, indifference, actually we use another terminology as well, which is risk uh, neutral and for risk preference, we also use a terminology risk uh, seeking. Similarly, in uh, risk literature, uh, especially in risk management, normally risk is calculated by standard deviation, but it's called uh, uh, as volatility. In this chapter, we also covered uh, capital asset pricing uh, model, although we did not cover it in detail. Uh, and it's a little bit, in my opinion, uh, demanding compared to uh, an undergraduate program. Uh, this model, although it was developed in the 1960s, but it is extremely, extremely relevant uh, even today. Uh, capital asset pricing model actually tells you the relationship between the risk and uh, expected uh, return. In chapter number six, which is uh, our today's topic, we'll talk about uh, financial statements, a possible framework for analysis, and then we will use these tools uh, for, for analyzing financial uh, statements. As I told you at the beginning of my lecture that uh, management is a science of uh, decision-making. And as I told you in chapter number three, finance managers make uh, three key important decisions investment decisions, financing decisions, and then asset management decisions. If I ask you a very simple question, and I'm sure most of you will uh, answer this correctly, are, are these decisions taken random or are these uh, calculated uh, decisions? Of course, they are not random. They are actually calculated uh, decisions. If, it, uh, if managers take random decisions, of course, then you do not need the uh, training. You just sit on your chair, toss a coin. If it's a head, you make one decision. If it's a tail, you make another decision. Of course, it's not that simple. It's a science and you have to take uh, calculated decisions. 
This definition is actually coming straight uh, from the book. I copied it from the book. So financial statement analysis is the art of transforming data from financial statements into information that is useful for informed decision making. So whenever you're dealing with any definitions, please pick the keywords first and then try to find a relationship between those uh, words. So the key terms in this definition used are transformation, data, information, and decision. So data, data, if you look at the data, data are just abstract numbers. It doesn't mean anything. You have to transform it. You have to, in other words, analyze it. And then after the analysis, that data actually uh, is uh, made into useful information. And then those information we can use for decision making. So if we look at the decision making process, we start with the data and then we analyze it. As I said, data is just a set of abstract numbers. It does not mean anything. You have to analyze it. Once you analyze it, of course, it's converted into useful information. Now, it has to be useful. The analysis should lead to useful information. And of course, those information we can use for our decision making. Now, the most important question is, where is there this data coming from? In a decision making process, we start with data. So where is this data coming from? In financial statement analysis, actually this data is mainly coming from financial statements. And whenever I say financial statements, it mainly means balance sheet and income statement actually. So this is my mistake, income statement. Apologize for that. Income statement. A typical balance sheet would look like this. So this one is the asset side of the balance sheet. Of course, uh, you have cash, accounts receivable, inventories, and this is, these are your current assets. Current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash uh, in less than one year. Um, total assets is $2,169. And if you see on the other hand, actually the total liabilities and owner's equity, it's also 2,169. And of course it makes sense because total assets is equal to total uh, liabilities plus owner's equity. The most important message that you should take away from this slide is this one. As you may remember from your financial accounting course, balance sheet is made as on debt. So this is the financial position of basket funders as on December 31st, 2003. Income statement on the other hand, if you see, it's for the year ending. So all these, for example, net sales, this is the total dollar amount of sales for the whole year, starting from January 1st, ending at December 31st, 2003. So the main difference between balance sheet and uh, income statement, balance sheet are made as on debt on a specific time. An income statement is actually for a whole year or for a whole quarter or for a whole half year. So it's made or time. So there are two different types of uh, data and I'm not talking about uh, 
the types of data in econometric sense. I'm talking about data in uh, accounting sense. So stock data is actually measured on a specific time as on date. So by this definition, actually balance sheet data is stock data. And then the other type of data is flow data, which is measured for an interval of time over time. So income statement has flow data. So please keep this uh, distinction in mind. So whenever we are talking about balance sheet data, it's stock data because all the numbers, for example, cash, it means that this is the dollar amount or rupee amount currently now with the company as a cash in bank account or cash. Uh, similarly, let's say if I'm talking about uh, expenditures, uh, which is an income statement uh, amount. So it tells us the total dollar amount or rupee amount of expenses over a period of time. So this distinction is extremely important. So whenever you're dealing with data, you have to have uh, that differentiation in mind, whether it's a stock data or it's a flow data. So I give you a very, uh, I would say, um, simple form of balance sheets, a basket funders and uh, income statement. But how does, let's say, a real balance sheet uh, look like? If you are interested, let's say, in balance sheets or income statements, or for that matter, financial statements of any company uh, which is listed in, uh, in Pakistan, uh, you can go to Pakistan Stock Exchange website and then you can download uh, annual reports of pretty much all companies which are listed on uh, stock exchanges. I downloaded uh, OGDCL uh, report for you. So it's a 230 pages. Uh, the annual report actually tells us almost everything about the company. For example, it's a board of directors. Um, it gives us uh, corporate information. Uh, but the most important one is actually financial statements. Uh, this is where we are entrusted uh, for the purpose of this chapter. So if I go to page number, let's say 106, this is the statement of financial position of OGDCL as on June 30th, 2019. And as you can see, it's as on. So it's a stock data. And it starts actually with the liability side first and they uh, share with you now the share capital and reserves and then they move to a non-current liabilities and then uh, current liabilities. After that, we have the asset side of the balance sheet and they start with non-current assets and then move on to uh, current assets uh, of the company. Uh, since most countries actually either they follow uh, GAAP, which is generally accepted uh, accounting principles, uh, and they're slowly actually moving to IFRS, which is International Financial uh, Reporting Systems. Uh, the benefit of following I IFRS or GAAP is actually, it makes the financial statements comparable. So let's say if you're comparing OGDCL with let's say Sui Southern, uh, most of the time what they do, they report their data in a very, very standard uh, form. So it's much easier for the investor to actually analyze uh, those uh, data. So as we started with the financial statement analysis uh, and uh, the definition of it, and then we picked uh, keywords. So the decision-making process, as I said, it starts with data and then we have to analyze it. So analysis is the second part of the decision-making uh, process. So how do we make uh, those uh, analysis? Of course, you need some tools for it. In this chapter, 
we will learn about those analytical tools, uh, which we can broadly categorize actually in ratio analysis. And there are five different categories for that. One is liquidity ratio. The other one is financial leverage ratios, coverage ratios, activity ratios, and profitability ratios. Uh, of course, these sets of ratios provide you different set of uh, information. Then we will move to trend analysis, and then we will also cover common size and uh, index uh, analysis. So in the upcoming two lectures, I will uh, cover ratio analysis in the first in the next lecture, and uh, the lecture after that, I will cover uh, trend analysis and common size and index analysis. We will do lots of Excel exercises. So if you are not comfortable with uh, using Microsoft Excel, please hone your skills, uh, do some exercises. I'll go through uh, the analysis through, um, through Microsoft uh, Excel, and I'll show, I'll show you how to use it. Uh, but these are essential tools in my opinion that uh, you as a business graduate should know uh, quite well. Uh, I'm done with my lecture. So the way you will learn from this lecture is, of course, you have to watch this video, but you have to watch it second by second. Please do not skip it. No skipping. Uh, read the PowerPoint slides and, of course, read uh, chapter number six of the recommended uh, book. Uh, Although I try my best to explain everything, but of course you will have some questions. So if you have any questions, you can email it to me uh, at uh, mazulla at gk.edu.pk or you can drop a question in WhatsApp group and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, this is the recommended book. I already uh, sent you the link for that. Um, I mean the reference for that. So uh, we will be using this book for uh, are teaching and learning. Um, this book is one of my favorite actually. This is probably one of the best books for undergraduate uh, students. Um, it gives you a very good flavor of uh, all the financial concepts. Of course, this is uh, meant for grad, not meant for graduate level students. It's only meant for undergrad uh, students. Uh, for example, let's say if you are interested to uh, know more about, let's say, investments, uh, investments, I mean, you, you, you can write a whole book on only one topic. So this book is extremely good for undergraduate uh, students. So in order to uh, get maximum out of my lecture, please read chapter number six and uh, hopefully uh, you will feel the difference. Uh, this is all for today, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, see you in the next lecture. Uh, and as I said, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, drop me a few lines uh, through my email or maybe through WhatsApp group. If you like this video, please uh, share your feedback uh, with me. If you didn't like uh, this video, that's perfectly fine. Please, again, give me your feedback and I'll try to make it uh, as suitable for you as uh, I can. I wish you all the best and uh, I'll uh, talk to you in my next uh, lecture. Thank you very much.